Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this day. We bless you for this opportunity given to us once again to hear from you and to listen to what you have prepared for us in Jesus' name. Give us understanding and help us, O God, to be the doers of this world, not only the hearers. That at the end of the day, Father, glory and honor shall be given unto your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Last week, per the study, we looked at the search the scriptures, which were talking about Solomon's wisdom. That is the wisdom of Solomon. So there, we saw that Solomon's desire for political alliance and women led him to marry what? Pharaoh's daughter and many others. So we saw that God forbid our alliance with unbelievers, that our relationship with unbelievers, especially in marriage, or we should join ourselves in business or in worship with the people of the world. Then Solomon also sought after God and he gave him wisdom and royal honor. This enabling him to judge God's people wisely. God's wisdom is not for merchandise or personal glory. It is for the service to God's glory. After God has prospered us, it's still our duty to remain obedient to what? To Him. Today, we are looking at the next, which is Lesson 810, Solomon builds God's temple. Solomon builds God's temple. We are going to take our memory verse from 1 Kings chapter 6 verse 12. 1 Kings chapter 6 verse 12. It tells us that concerning the, this house which thou art, in building, if thou wilt walk in my status and execute my judgment and keep all my commandments to walk in them, then will I perform my word with thee, which I speak unto David thy father. First King chapter 6, verse 12. Because of our time, we will not read much verses, but at home we can read personally, or personally, we can read on our own. First Kings chapter 5, verse 1 to 18, and then First Kings chapter 6, verse 1 to 38, then Second Chronicles chapter 2, verse 1 to 18, the, and then the last verse will be First Chron Second Chronicles chapter 3, verse 1 to 17. So, we are seeing that the building of God's temple by King Solomon was a long-awaited dream that eventually came true. Even his own father, King David, conceived it that he had to what? To build a temple for what? His father, God. But God restrained him. God said no. God restrained him from going ahead true prophet, uh, prophet what? Nathan, in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 4 and then 5. So Nathan the prophet, or Nathan's prophetic statement came to pass during the reign of what? Solomon. God passed through him. And he was to build. He got everything that he was to build. But God told him, you cannot what? Build a temple. God stopped him. Why? Because he said, you cannot build, you cannot build a temple because your He said that you will not build it, but it's going to be your son who I will raise up myself to take after you. And he will be the one that will what? Build my sanctuary, my house, my temple. So today the study this study focuses today on the reason for building the temple. Number one, 
Number two, the provision made for the building of the temple and the clarion call for all believers to be committed to building God's spiritual what? temple. So, it is very important for all of us to look at this particular one. So, the, the point number one, we are going to look at three points. The point number one here, number one, the purpose for building God's temple. The purpose for building God's temple. What was the reason for the temple of God to be built? Let's look in First Kings chapter one, chapter five, rather, verse five. First Kings chapter five, verse five. First Kings chapter five, verse five. It says that, and behold. A purpose to build an house unto the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord speak unto David my father, saying, The son whom I have I will set upon thy throne in thy room, he shall build an house unto my name. Amen. Let's look at Second Chronicles chapter two. Second Chronicles chapter two. Verse 1 <laughs> Second Chronicles chapter 2 Verse 1 says that And Solomon determined to build an house for the name of the Lord And an house for his kingdom Second Samuel chapter 7 Second Samuel chapter 7 Verse 1. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 1. And it came to pass when the king sat in his house, and the Lord has given him rest round about for all his enemies. Verse 2. That the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar. But the ark of the of God dwelled within curtains. So today we are looking at the point verse, uh, the, the 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 reason why the temple of God was built. By these verses, we should see that the Jews' temple was a place for the worship of Yahweh. The temple had three sections. When you look at the temple that Solomon built, it was having what three sections. The first section is what? The porch. When I say the porch, it means the entry. So the, the porch was the place of entrance. Then number two, the holy place. And the holy of holiest. Everything about the temple was a pointer to God. That really pleased what? God. Everything pleased what? God. The temple brought God's presence among his people. It serves as a place where the sinners could find God and peace, and where God's people could make their petition to God. So also the spiritual atmosphere in our life or in our place of worship should drive God's consciousness onto what? Worshippers and provide help for all. The temple of God today built is to invite everybody whosoever no matter the 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 position of the place the person whosoever the person may be whether the person she is illiterate is educated or is not whatsoever the person is he is to do what to make exactly he is to call everybody to the place so we see that even when we look at the 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 Jews temple right from the Israel time when they came out of Egypt Moses through, through the leadership of what Moses they went on the wilderness what happened Moses built up what a tabernacle a tent that means the tent for them to worship God over there and it was a shadow of the temple that Solomon was to build later and Solomon's also own was a real also what 
shadow of what? Of Jesus Christ who is to come in person. So, we can see that the temple of worship or the temple was a place for worship of Yahweh. That temple, that place was, is not built to go and sleep inside. It was built for what? To worship God over there. So, when you look at the whole Bible, the whole scripture, we can see that the temple is severally referred to as a scripture in the scriptures as the holy place as a holy place a holy temple in, in psalm, psalm psalm 71 79 verse 1 it also can be referred as the house of what god in first chronicle chapter 6 verse 48 it also be can referred as what the sanctuary or it can also be referred as tent of tabernacle of what god so prior to the building of the uh, the building, the children of Israel worship in tabernacles during the wilderness uh, wandering. The temple constructed by Solomon consisted of many places, as I just said. So, and that is the just a, a description about what the tabernacle of God was. So, if one is to ask that. What will therefore be or was the reason why the tabernacle of God was to be built? Number one, the tabernacle of God was built, number one, for different purposes. The first number one purpose was to establish a place suitable for worship and devotion to God. Number two, the temple was a dwelling place of the Lord. It brought God's presence among his people. Number three, it directed the minds of the people towards God. Number four, it was a symbol of spiritual things. And by that, God was reverenced. Number five, it was to serve as a place where the sinners could find God and peace. Number six, it was where the people of God poured out their hearts and made their petition unto God. Today, today's temple or place of worship cannot be anything less than that, than what God expected of the Old Testament temple. While Christ on earth was on earth, he took vehement steps to cleanse the temple, he said, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. The question number one highlights <coughs> highlights some of the some of the reasons Solomon built God's temple. Highlight. Tell what were the reasons that Solomon built the temple. Solomon built the temple, number one, because it was to establish a suitable place for worship, for devotion to God. Number two, it was a temple where there will be a dwelling, uh, which will be going to be a dwelling place of the Lord. Number three, it will direct the mind of the people towards God. Number four, it was also a symbol of what? A spiritual things. And by that, God was reverenced. Number five, it was to serve as a place where the sinners could find God and peace. Six, it was where the people of God pour out their hearts and made their petition unto God. That was the house of what? Prayer. So, that is in that particular question. But we see that the temples of God should be a place of refuge where the spiritual atmosphere drives God's consciousness onto the world's worshippers. That's why he said, even in the 20 chapter 20 verse 40, he said, For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee and to give up thine enemies before thee. 
Therefore shall thy camp be holy, that ye see no unclean things in thee, and turn away from thee. Today's temple should also be a place of what? Square. For all the rich, the wretched, rich and poor, young and old, educated or illiterate, the discouraged and the sin laden, as there is room for everyone at the cross, the same way there is the same thing in God's temple. So, the children of Israel understood the reverence or the reverence, the reverence of building God's temple. What was the reverence? Relevance. What were the the relevance for building God's temple? Where the Ark of Covenant, and what the meaning of the Ark of Covenant that is, which was. Symboli uh, symbolizing what the majesty, the majestic presence of what God. And they rose up to call to the call to provide for the building. They did it. The question can be here is that what impression does Christ's action give us abundance uh, give us about today's temple or place of worship? What impression? Does Christ's action give us about today's temple or place of worship? Christ today is in our midst. He has done already what? The sacrifice. Whoever that is a, as children of God, we are the temple of God. And God expects that temple to be holy. And the church the temple, the building of God, where we worship God, Christ is there. He's expecting that what Christ has done it, that we should keep his temple what the temple, the temple of God today should be a temple of what? Prayer, worship, praises to God, where we pour out our heart to all that we desire to God and let the presence of God to be there and let that place, place to be what? Holy. So that the presence of God will continue to remain what with us. Mm. Amen. Mm. Point number two: the provision for building God's temple. Mm. We saw that Solomon to build Israelites and all the people around the whole Israel supported the building of the what temple, the project. Although David has prepared gold and silver in abundance for the building of the temple. But Solomon still needs to make preparation to get timber and stones ready for the work. That is why he said what? That's why he did what? That's why he did what? He sent to Hiram saying, I propose to build a house unto the Lord, unto the name of the Lord my God. Now therefore command thou that they knew me, that they heal me cedar trees out of Lebanon, and my servant shall be with thy servant, and unto thee will I give hire of thy servant according to all that thou shalt appoint. So the response of King Hiram to Solomon's request is a proof that God's work will never lack resources. Amen. Anytime we are to do the work of God, we will do it and God will always provide for that in Jesus' name. Mm. Even in the wilderness, the children of Israel gave sacrificially before the commencement of the building project <coughs> until Moses gave commandment. And they caused it to be, what? <coughs> to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary so the people were restrained from bringing you see they gave abundantly amen we will give abundantly for the work of god in jesus name amen. they gave abundantly for the work of god they did everything that is supposed to be done and they did and they give abundantly 
avant measure that nobody could have thought of. So we see that the Hiram supply him with skilled man, 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 even skilled even manpower and resources for the work. Like King David, believers should be what deeply concerned <coughs> about God's church and give continually in support of what His work. This is an integral part of the word, our worship and devotion to what to Him. We should give. We should give. So that we will be able to help for God's work. And no matter what we are to give, we give abundantly. And we give abundantly and the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. And anything that we are giving, anytime we are to give, we will give abundantly. So we can see that the people were indeed generous and committed to giving. They kept donating the material needs needed for the word construction work until their word liberality exceeded the necessity. Meanwhile, having entered into the treaty with Solomon, King Hiram supplied him with the cedar and poor pin wood from Lebanon as well as what skilled artisan, as I said from the beginning. So what do we see here? What we can learn even vividly from here is that we see that it is worthy to of note that though David was not allowed to build a magnificent temple unto God, the Lord commanded the thought of uh, honoring him with such a project. Why am I saying that? Because he said in Second Chronicles chapter six verse eight, he said, "For as much as it was in thine heart to build a house for my name, thou didst well." You see it. That did well. Yeah, he did well. When it when in that it was in thy heart. So it's also instructive, instructive that God, David did not frustrate or discourage Solomon from carrying out this divine assignment. Rather, he made provision for what? For the work. Like in David, believers, what do we learn there? We learn as believers that we should we, should, we have to be deeply cons- concerned for the church of God. That is the pillar and ground and ground for the truth. Again, he was not jealous that his son was God's perf- preferred choice, uh, choice to build the temple. He wasn't jealous for that because God, he was I want to, I want, I want to build. He said I shouldn't build. He was not jealous for that. Therefore, he made some provision for him. How this contact with so-called Christian who would both frustrate the grace of God and noble effort of of other believers in the development of what God's church Solomon's greatest achievement was the uh, was the construction of the temple started started in the fourth year of his reign he compel, completed it in this 11th year as believers we should be ready to give continually in support of God's work until the task is finished amen given out our sub, sub, substance to God is an integral integral part of our worship and devotion to Him. That's what the Bible says that honor the Lord with the substance and with the first fruit of thy increase, so shall thy bands be filled with the plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with the new wine. Amen. Mm-hmm. God's work done in God's we will never lack God's what resources. Amen. We will give abundantly anytime the Lord is asking us in Jesus' name. And anytime the Lord is asking us, whatever is asking us, we will give because He wants us to give and to be what blessed by it. Question number three. Comment on the attitude of the Israelites of the of the of the children of Israel towards giving for the building of the tabernacle. The attitude. They give bountifully. They give freely. They give until what? Until the time that what? The, 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 there were no need again. They gave until the what? The building of the temple what? Was finished. Was as completed. We should also give the same way. We should not be tired of what? Giving. We will give until what? The, until 
what God's work is to be done is completed in Jesus' name. We will give and give bountifully in Jesus' name. Why should believers give sacrificial to support God's work? Because when we do that, because when we do that, why should believers give sacrificially to support God's work? It's a recommendation from God. And when we give, we will never what? Lack. Amen? Mm-hmm. Question number, uh, point number three. The purposeful, purposeful commitment to building God's spiritual temple. Purposeful. It was a purposeful commitment. The commitment was really with intention, with a reason that he was committed to build the temple of God. He said that that's what he did do and we are, we are calling it as really it was purposeful, it was also committed. And with the Lord tell us that what? And he what? Garnished the house with precious stone for beauty and the gold was gold of what? Paravins. The Old Testament temple was built with gold. A symbol of quality. You can see, when I say gold, it means that is a symbol of quality and what? Purity. Gold. Such was the, uh, the, the, the sacredness of the temple built with hand and dedicated to God. Our temples endured by God. Believers ought to be today, they ought to be holy unto Him because we are the temple of God today. So we need to be what? Holy. So Solomon built a holy temple unto God. And the temple of God was holy there because God was holy and wherever it was, it was what? Holy. We must also flee adultery. We must flee fornication and every sin that defiles the temple of the what? The living God. The true church of Christ is not the physical building, but the believers who fellowship therein. Are you a, are you a temple of God? If you are a temple of God, there should not be sin, there should not be any sin regarded in your life. That is why they are likened to the temple of God. If man made a temple and all its essentials were holy, separated from all common and what and holy uses and uh, even dedicated alone to be to, 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 to the service of God, the bodies of true believers are holy and are all also what their members should also be what be, be, be employed for the service of God alone. So we see that as believers today, we have no right over over we have no li- right over our own lives. Yes, because we are bound to the Lord and also accountable to Him. As a slave purchased is being purchased, bought by his master, he is the sole property of the world, of the master. The same way as believers, we are God's property because we are bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We must therefore employ our spiritual, our spirit, soul, and even what body in the service of our Lord, Lord, and promotes by all means the honor and the glory of our what our own God, Amen? Amen. So we should make sure that we do that, and make sure that whatever we are to do, we we'll do the right thing. In some way, uh, to sum up this particular point, we see that the Old Testament temple was built with gold, which I said that it was a symbol of what quality and purity. So. What do we see now? As children of God today, believers today, we are God's simple because He dwells in us. God dwells in us in Jesus' name. Therefore, we should be holy unto Him. We must flee everything that defiles the temple of the living God. And also we can even see finally that in addition, we must employ our spirit, soul, and body in the service of our Lord and promote by all means the honor and glory of our God. We are looking at question number five now to see that when what must the believers do to keep his spiritual temple uh, habitable for Christ? What should believers, what should a believer do to keep his own spiritual temple, that is his body, habitable for Christ so that Christ can dwell in? We should, to do that, we should make sure that what he, he, he abstain himself from anything that he should flee. From anything that will defile that temple, defile his body, will make him to be dirty. 
by doing so, God will dwell in him in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Must flee any form of sin, anything that is not correct, anything that is not accepted by the Lord, and then the Lord will be in us in Jesus' name. So we see here that Solomon, in the same way, Solomon builds God's temple. So we see that we should also commit ourselves to giving and supporting God's work. Like the temple of old, the church of God should be a place of refuge and provide help for all. The church is a place of refuge for both the poor, the rich, the educated, the non-educated, the whosoever in that particular place, sinners, whosoever, to come there and find the result, the, the answer to all that they need from the Lord. We also, also, our body is God's temple today. It's not talking about the physical te- uh, temple, but our body mm-hmm. is the temple of God today. So we must pres- uh, preserve it in purity and dedicate it to God's service. God's work done in God's way will never lack God's, pre- God's res- uh, resources. Mm-hmm. If you do it in the way of the Lord, what he is asking us, if you do it in the way, we will do it and we will never lack any resources in Jesus' name. Today we have learned on how Solomon built a temple, how and why did he build it, what was the purpose of the building, and the provision. He, did, he committed himself he had to build it. He built it for people to worship, to serve, for the presence of God to be there. And then people provided, the, all the people came in to support for the building of what? The temple. And then the last, the, the last was that he... As they were doing it, Christ now today is in us and God is in us as the temple of God as we are today, being born again. We are to make sure we maintain that temple holy, clean, so that the Spirit of God and the presence of God and Jesus Christ will continue to be honored in our lives, in our bodies, in Jesus' name. And by doing so, we shall be what He wants us to be in Jesus' name. That is why we should do the same thing. But any time we are doing it, Whatever we are putting, we have to make sure that remember that God is glorified or exalted in this particular job or the temple. Let us pray. Let's pray and thank God because He has given us this message that we will not use our body for anything evil. We will not use our temple for anything evil. But we will also write number one, dedicated to the temple. Hope when they are building the temple of God, physical one as well. And that temple of God should be placed and needs clean. We should help until the temple of God is finished building. We should also be dedicated, provide for the needs of everything. And make sure that where we are building, it will be a place, a sanctuary where the Lord will dwell in. Keep that particular place holy, clean and neat. The presence of God will be in there. Pray also that today you are the temple of God. You are born again. Christ dwell in you. The Bible says that ye are the temple of the Lord. And you must, which has been bought by a, pres- uh, by a great price, you must keep it holy and pure. So the Spirit of God will dwell in there. The Lord will help us to holy, clean, sanctified, pure until He comes. And He come and find this temple holy and clean, preserved till He comes. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Mm-hmm. Everlasting Father, we thank you this day. We bless you once again for giving us this word. We pray that, O God, as you speak to us concerning the temple, Solomon builds, he dedicated, committed to build. Lord, it was a privilege from him. And he did that exactly. And your presence was abundant today. We pray, O oh God, and all the Israel, they came to assistance and they joined together hand to hand to a building of this temple. They were never tired, never weary, they never relaxed until the temple or the build of the temple was over. We also give it the grace that will be also supporting the work of God at any point in time. When we are to build the temple, do any activity in the church, develop anything, raise anything, Lord, 
that we will be committed to do it, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Give us the willingness to do such in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. I pray that, O oh God, that our temple that we built, that it will be a place of refuge, a place where it will be a house of prayer, a house of sanctuary, uh, holiness and purity, where the Lord will dwell, where the problems and difficulties of brothers and sisters, whoever comes in there, whoever calling himself as a seeders come there, do be repented, or anybody that comes in there, do receive all their miracles, all their needs, oh God, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Bless, Father, our churches, bless every place of worship, and we all serve the God as you are coming. Lord, you say you, we need to preserve our and keep our body, our temple, holy and clean until you come. Help us to also wash our body, horses, and clean this and sanctify it and make it clean, oh God, in Jesus' name. That when you come, you will find it neat and clean, oh God, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. That you will not find anything dirty in it. We will keep our body under control, free for any evil thing, any fornication, any dirty thing that is from sin. Lord, that we will be holy, no and no stain on our bodies, and wait for until you come in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Father, you will come and make us clean and safe. Clean and wash, righteous and pure, within and without, O oh God, that the name of the Lord will be glorified at the end of the day in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, because you have heard us, O oh God. Thank you because you have heard us. Help us that what we are now lacking us to be able to make up to become the temple of God. Father, help us to do such in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Give us the grace. Thank you because you have heard us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen.